Luke chapter 14. Once you have it, say higher. Luke 14, verse 28, reads as so. For which of you, which of you, intending to build a tower, sit it not first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Which one of you? This is the Lord speaking. Less happily after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. All that behold it begin to mock him. I'm talking to somebody already. All that behold him begin to mock him saying this man. I want you to deal with your cell phone this morning. Say, this man, I know you might be of the female gender, but you are of mankind. So this man began to build and was not able to finish. You may take your seats. We are still in the end game series. Today's focus is soul caliber. soul caliber if you don't get it you will in just a little bit soul caliber yes this is not a game now I want you to deal with the text that you were given and I want to use that as a syllabus if you will from which I'll extract some points from because I want to focus on some different things within the text that will help you out once we start to begin to uh, dialogue and we begin to uh, look at what's in front of us and what God is trying to say to us on this morning. And we look at Philippians also. We look at Philippians also. Philippians 3. I want to I wanna read this into your system as well. So keep that which I just told you in your system. But I need to read Philippians into your hearing as well. So Christ has said, what man, before he builds a building, does not first count the cost so that he can finish what he started? Now, we go to Philippians, and we're going to deal with Paul's introspective. This is self-examination. It's Paul's introspective. The thing that I admire about Paul over all of his many accolades that I'll get to a little bit later, over all his many accolades, Paul has a tremendous sense of introspective. He's able to look at himself and analyze what's going on with him and realize his value. He's able, he's the one that wrote about let a man examine himself. Philippians 3 verse 4 says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he have whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. So if anybody wanted to depend on their flesh, I could do that. Circumcised on the eighth day, the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is the law, blameless. Now, this is the same writer who preaches not to think of himself, think of oneself more highly than y'all. This is that same preacher. 
And then this same preacher, this same writer, this same author, this same apostle goes to another person. He writes a letter to Timothy. And in his letter to Timothy, if you just want to follow, is it, in chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. But he begins to talk to Timothy. We're going to jump back to Philippians. But he begins to talk in Timothy, and he says, Thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. This is a self-assessment. He put me into this ministry, counted me faithful. Now, formerly, I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, injurious, but obtained mercy because I did it in ignorance, the ignorance of unbelief. I want you to know that even that we're in salvation, we still have ignorance of unbelief. I don't think that. I said even though we're saved, even though we're in salvation, we still have ignorance in our unbelief because sometimes you don't know a thing until you believe that thing first. Because you didn't know that God could do it before you believed him for it. And even in your prayer and in your hope, your hope is that based on everything that he's done aforetime, that if he said it, that he shall bring it to pass. Some might say, and I like to use this, some might say that you going out there on a limb. Well, that's where the fruit is. Christ came into this world. I said he came into the world to save sinners. So you and your holy self, he didn't come for you. Uh, uh, he didn't, 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 uh, he didn't come for you. I said he came for the sinner. That's what, the, that's what Christ himself says. And this is what the text is saying. He says he came into the world to save sinners. And he says that line that we hear so often, he says, of whom I am chief. I'm a chief sinner. He didn't say I was. No, look at your text. I, no, look at your text. No, 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 look at your text. He didn't say I was. He says that I am. If a man said that he is without sin, he is a liar. I know that you don't want to deal with it because you haven't done anything on the outside that somebody will register as sin. But you got sinful thoughts. So because you haven't done something that everybody's now pouncing on, because this ain't the season for you to get pounced on. Because, um, you know, now bankruptcy is going to be the new thing that all the preachers start preaching about. I said it and I ain't scared of it. So now all the thing that preachers going to do, they're going to hop on bankruptcy and they're going to leave all this other stuff out because that's the hot topic. All right. All right. Well, I don't know when we start preaching to the world, but amen. We preach to please God. If he be lifted up, then he'll do the drunk and all that good stuff. So why are you trying to preach to the world and pacify them? You're trying to preach to the world so that somebody worldly will come up in your church and so. I'd rather somebody worldly come to the church and change because when they change, they don't understand how to soak them mind. Let me get back to the, let me get back, let me get back to what I was talking about. He counted me faithful. I was a blasphemer. I was all this stuff. I was a chief sinner. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy. That in me first, say in me first, would be a pattern. I would show forth all long suffering as a pattern for them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting. Further down it says, for we are the circumcision. This is the ketubah. Somebody say ketubah. Now ketubah means covenant in Hebrew. Ketubah. It's a marriage contract. He said, for we are those who are in a marriage contract. 
Once you decide to become saved, you just signed up to get married. Meet me at the altar in your white dress. We ain't getting no younger, so you might as well. I'm just talking about what I'm... Let's get married. But this ain't Jagged Edge. Anyway. The Ketubah, which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. This is the same author that said, now if I wanted to, Tell you about all the things that I've done in my flesh. Nobody, I'm the Hebrew of Hebrews. I'm blameless concerning the law of Pharisee. Concerning, I'm zeal. Some might say a little bit overzealous. But that's who I am. And I can tell you about it. But guess what? In my flesh, say in my flesh, I have no confidence. Verse 7 of Philippians 3, he comes back and he says, But what things were gained to me? What things were gained to me? Those I counted loss for Christ. I want to get into the meat of the subject now. Paul's accomplishments, Hebrew of Hebrews, Pharisee, zealous concerning the law, blameless, author, Theologian, evangelist, epistle, a pattern, and an apostle. But Paul, on top of his accolades, also has some culpabilities. Some culpabilities, in other words, he has some faults. See, we very anxious to list our accomplishments. We don't like to think about our culpabilities. We want to take the cope off of it and just leave it as ability. He says, I'm a blasphemer, persecutor, injurious, chief sinner. And the thing that he didn't list, but the thing that we know that's within the text of the Bible as a whole, is that he's an accessory to murder. He's an accessory to the slayers. See, oftentimes we think that because we haven't slain nobody, that we didn't have nothing to do with their death. But what Paul did in the book of Acts is Paul stood in the door and he made sure that they didn't get their coats dirty. I'm talking about the slayers. I'm going to make sure that the slayers don't get dirty, and I'm going to hold their coats. Can you picture call Paul, Saul at the time, future apostle of the Lord, theologian, author, mentor, father in the faith, holding coats while they slay Stephen? Can you imagine this? Now, church, y'all ain't ready for this one. Could you hear a word from him now? Nah, no, y'all didn't hear the question. I said, could you hear a word from him now? See, we deal with the text as if it's not a person that we're looking at. You're looking at the words of a person. Yes, they are inspired by the Holy Spirit, and make no mistake about it, but what you're looking at is a person, but we'll preach Paul. But the minute, now this is not a license to go acting a fool. But what I'm saying is even if you have written since your time of salvation that you haven't faltered and you haven't wavered, you still got some stuff in your past. And there's a whole group of people. It's not one, two, three. It is a community. It is a nation. It is a people that know your dirt. And the people that know your dirt can't receive 
your spirituality. The people that know your dirt can't receive your word. I'm not talking about because you're ineffective. I'm saying because they know your dirt. Uh, yeah. But Paul's desirable quality is his introspectiveness, his quality, the one that I admire. He has authentic self-appraisal. It's authentic. Some of us do self-appraisals, but we only start thinking about the stuff that we got. So if I, if I tell you that I'm riding something nice, and that because I can dress a little nice, and because I got a certain kind of job, all that stuff I could tell to you and make you think that I'm something. I think too many often times is that instead of presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice, we present a front. <laughs> this is not me that you're really meeting. This is a representative of who I really want to be. If you ever get to meet me, you might not like me, so let me send a representative. So you will never ever get to meet Joel Polk. But I tell you all about Pastor Joe. What I'm telling you is that the Apostle Paul is speaking from Saul's experience. I said the Apostle Paul is speaking from Saul's experience. I'm saying your salvation man has to speak from your old man's experience. The only way that you came out of that old man is that you were one first. <sighs> Assertion of fault is not praiseworthy. I said, assertion of fault is not praiseworthy. I want to introduce a new terminology into your hearing. It is kinetic repentance. I said, kinetic repentance. Do you know what kinetic means? Kinetic means in motion. I said, kinetic repentance. That is what is praiseworthy. What's praiseworthy is kinetic repentance. I'm not saying that you got to fall and repent every day. I'm saying that you walk a life of repentance because the only way that you can truly repent is to never go back, which means that you have to keep moving forward. I'm talking about kinetic repentance. Amen? Because if you keep turning around and you keep turning around, and you keep turning around, chances are you're just going to get dizzy. I said, if you keep turning around, he turned it. Yeah, he turned it that time. He turned it. Yeah, yeah okay, he turned it. He turned it. How many times you going to get turned before you get turned out? I'm sorry, did I just, did I just go there? I said, how many times you going to turn before you get turned out? Oh, Y'all don't want to deal with me this morning. How many times? <laughs> The devil turned tricks anyway. God makes a change. Amen. Magic is an illusion. Miracles are everlasting. Magic is performed with distraction. Miracles are performed in broad daylight. The man's hand that with it never returned to a withered state. Because it wasn't magic. It was a miracle. Now introspective, introspection rather. Introspection is a reflective look inward. It's an examination of one's own thoughts and feelings. Let a man examine himself. This is a faith check. This is a faith check. Because he says, let a man examine himself to see whether he is in the faith. Amen? 
Let a man examine himself to see whether he is in the faith. So before anybody else has to call you out, before anybody else has to say what you're not doing, you ought to check yourself um, before you wreck yourself. Why does the pastor and the prophet and the apostle and the evangelist and the pastor and the teacher have to identify sin? You know what sin look like because that's what you supposedly came out of. The only reason that you don't know what sin look like is because you still an addict. I had to deal with that. You still an addict. You still an addict. But I want to move right now. We're going to get to the addict point. I want to deal with right now count the cost. Somebody say count the cost. Do you have enough to finish? Birth and graduation. These are things I speak of often. Birth and graduation. These are things that we love. You ain't never seen too many people mad at somebody birth. You ain't seen too many people mad at somebody graduation. But birth and graduation requires meantime. In between time, what is the carry-on apparatus? How is it that you are carrying on? How is it that you're carrying on? Amen? Beginning only requires an attempt. <laughs> Church don't want to mess with me today. I said beginning only requires an attempt. So all these people making these declarations, it's a new beginning. You didn't have to actually walk through that. You just had to attempt it. It's a new beginning. Are you going to follow through though? It's a new day. Are you going to seize the day? Or are you just going to keep calling it a new one? Are you going to work while it, are you going to work while it is day? Or are you just going to keep talking about a new one? I know mercy is a new every morning. I understand that. Well, what you going to do with the mercy that you receive this morning? Because I don't care who you are and what your place in faith is, you receive new mercy this morning just by you waking up. Amen. Amen. Completion. Completion fully requires perseverance. It requires perseverance, amen? Because that beginning only requires an attempt. That's it. But completion fully requires perseverance. What kind of perseverance? Perseverance over setbacks, over delays, over workforce complications. Mm over budgetary concerns. I'm talking about building, y'all. Because in the building process, people don't stick to you during the building process. They don't stick to you during the building process. They're there when you break ground. They're there with their hard hats and their suits when the ribbon is cut. And they applaud and they cheer and then they disappear until the building's complete. But who's there in the sweat, in the heat of the day, working, toiling, making sure that behind the scenes, the only reason why you see these lights that are beaming in your eyes is because somebody was careful enough to crawl in the ceiling and run the connection to the power. But you don't see that. You just see the light. You see the carpet and you see what state of condition that it's in. But I didn't see none of y'all here nan day vacuuming nan rug. Oh, how nice the church. They don't want to deal with me today. Uh, oh, how nice it is. We have such a beautiful facility now. 
I got to call you. I got to pull you. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about to deal with it. I got to call you. I got to set up appointments. I got to set up timetables for you to clean that which you say you're invested in. For you to take care of that which you say that you invested in. You love your child, but your child hair is a mess. You love your mother that now is in her twilight years, but you done sent her off to the home. Because when you was old, when you was young, she took care of you when you couldn't take care of yourself. But now because you don't have anything invested in it, because you're a get-me kind of person, because you're a get-me kind of person, now you don't look at it from a standpoint like, I'm going to need that help down the line. That's, I, I, I got I to come back over here. I got to come back over here. But what about all these concerns in the building? Who starts a building? That's what we're talking about, right? Who starts a building and lays a foundation but didn't count the cost? I laid the foundation, but I didn't count the cost. Check this out. There is no other foundation that will stand except Christ, right? But if you lay the foundation and you never build upon it, you never come in connection with him, you just said the name, Christ. But there was no relationship. You never actually built upon it. You always relied upon whomever to do it, somebody else, because you want somebody to take care of you, don't you? Women get married because they want a man to take care of them. I'm not saying that you can't be independent. I'm saying you want a man to take care of you. Look, being taken care of is more than financial. Uh, being taken care of is more than sexual. Oh, he take care of me. You know how they talk. Oh, he take care of me. But you on the grind. While he's sitting at home, his feet on your couch, because he ain't got credit to get a house. But he on your, but he look beautiful, don't he, though, baby? He look real good, don't he, though? And he take care of you, don't he? When the lights go down, I, I'm, talking to, I'm talking to a church people. I, I ain't patty caking nothing. He take care of you when the lights go down. But when you need something to eat, he ain't nowhere to be found. When you need a shoulder to cry on, he ain't nowhere to be found. Did you not count the cost? Did you not know what you was getting into before you got into it or you just saw fineness? You saw something that looked good and didn't understood what it kept to keep it up. Do you understand what it takes to keep it up? A lot of us can get married, but we don't understand what it takes to keep it up. I said a lot of us can get married, but we don't understand how to keep it up. So you can get into this ketubah with Christ, but not understand how to keep it up. Yeah, I know you got to sweep around your own front door and all that. Yeah, well, didn't actually sweep it then. Stop talking about sweeping it. Stop talking about how dirty everybody else's porch is. Stop talking about how your porch got dirty because of somebody else with dirty feet came to it. It's your porch. You clean it up. They mess me up. That's the way I, why I am the way I am. I don't talk much because that my, you know, saying where I was in a past relationship, they abused me. Okay. Are they there now? No, they left me. So leave them. Well, he left me. Well, then leave him. Well, she left me. Well, then leave her. <laughs> when I take something that I no longer need, y'all ain't going to like this. When I take something that I no longer need, what I tend to do with it, and my wife just told me about this, but what I tend to do is no matter what it is, I'm going to crumple it into a tight ball. I'm going to throw it in a trash can. Sometimes I'll even play a game with it. I'll lean back and fade away. And if I miss, I make sure that that joker gets in the trash can. And then I go a step further. 
I closed the bag, I tied the bag up real tight. And then I put that trash into the trash container. And then the trash container, I put the trash container out on the road so when the people that take out the trash, take out the trash, the trash is gone. Stop hoarding your emotions anyway. I said stop hoarding your emotions. Stop hurt. Uh, man, I got to get to, I got to, I got to, I got to go. I got, I got to preach this here. Woo. But it's going to take some perseverance to get through all that. If you're going to build something, build it in his name. Build your brand in his name. Now I want to get to, I want to get to some other things. Ah, oh, I got a lot to cover, y'all. Y'all all right? I say, introduction. I know I'm, I'm kind of, at least looks like I'm going everywhere, but I got a plan, I promise you. I counted the cost. Introduction is not necessary. Inventory is. I said introduction is not necessary. Inventory is. What are you talking about? Paul admonishes us to think soberly. He says, think soberly, which means not intoxicated by narcotics. That's the first thing that we think of when we say about being sober. Don't be intoxicated by narcotics, right? But it's not only just narcotic, but there's other types of toxins. There's other types of toxins like um, lust and elitism. Lust is very intoxicating. I can't remember the entire quote of the commercial, but now they're selling a car, actually a group of cars called, uh, and they have an F on them, and they say one of the lines is that F provokes lust. This is what they're selling to you. It said F provokes temptation, and this is what they're selling you. They want you to get inside of this thing that's going to provoke lust. They want you to get inside of this thing that's going to provoke temptation. This is what they're selling. This is what they're selling to us. I'm proud of it. It's all sexy. You see the car. It's all shiny. In terms of F type provokes lust. And you're looking at the car like, I can't wait to get me one of them. And ain't that just how we do friendships and relationships? I can't wait to get me one of them. When little did you know, once you hopped inside of that vehicle, that thing was going to provoke lust. Before you got inside that, amen, you was okay. You already had enough to deal with. But then you went and gotten something that was going to provoke. I said you went and got inside something that was going to provoke you. Amen. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 elitism is intoxicated. Once you feel like you're on top of the mountain, you know, once you own your own business, you own your own business, you buttoned up. Now you gotta you're an entrepreneur now. Some of y'all need to go work for somebody, by the way. Y'all don't want to deal with me. Tell my stuff, everybody gonna be everybody can't be an entrepreneur. You ain't built that way. Not everybody. Some people are. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you can't be that if that's the way that you built. But don't you try to become something that you're not. Everybody couldn't be Moses. Somebody had to be Aaron. Somebody had to be them Levites. Somebody had to do it. Anyway, she can't be everything. Can't be everything. Got to be what you're called to be. But because you stand on top of a platform and now you have status don't mean for you to get drunk with power because the minute that we have power we just start doing all kind of stuff we start doing all kind of stuff and just because you had a position and the authority to do it don't mean that you should do it I don't care what your title is yeah I'm talking about him with his black self I don't care who you are the Constitution was written for a reason homeboy you can't keep you surfing Congress like they don't exist. I don't care if you don't like the rules. The rules are put there for a reason. Y'all don't want to deal with me. I said it, I ain't scared of it. You can't keep doing this stuff. What's the rule? If everybody can just go over the rules, what, what do we have them for? Because they want anarchy. I tell you something, I, I came home and there was some stuff by the door and I picked up the stuff by the door that they were delivering and as I opened the door, something fell out the door and I looked at the little thing on the door and I wish I would have saved it, but I ripped it up, I crumpled it up and I threw it in the trash can, which it'll be on its way out on Monday. But what happened is, that's when they take out my trash, but what happened is, I looked at it before I threw it away. I made an assessment of it and said, why do we need a world government? 
they putting it on your door now. They putting it on your door now. It's not behind the scenes no more. Now they come straight at with you. Y'all don't think that y'all in the last days. Because it used to be in the background. It was just a whisper. Now they putting it in your door. Next thing it'll be in your mailbox. There's a difference between what goes on your door and what goes in your mailbox. Nah, hold on. Let me deal with that real quick. So anybody can walk up and put something in your door. Once it gets inside your mailbox, now it's legal. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. That's a whole nother issue. But introduction is necessary, not necessary. Inventory is. Why am I talking about inventory? Why am I talking about lust? Why am I talking about elitism? And we're talking about end game. We're talking about soul caliber. What, what's the, I don't get it. Right? Don't seek recognition. Authority understands authority. So Paul lists all this stuff about himself, right? But you ain't got to look for recognition because under authority understands authority. Let me give you two instances. Christ and the centurion. It's funny how this is going to work out. Y'all going to like this. Christ and the centurion. Christ comes to the centurion. The centurion has a problem. He needs somebody to be healed. He says, come to my house. And then somewhere in the middle of the story, he says, oh, no, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house, but I'm a man of authority and under authority, I understand authority if you just say the word then my servant will be healed I understand authority, how do you walk to Christ being a centurion, you're a Roman centurion you have authority when you have actual authority you can recognize actual authority not somebody who's bossy I said somebody who has actual authority because he, he didn't come to Caiaphas, did he? No, y'all ain't hear me. Y'all know Caiaphas was a priest of that day, right? He didn't come to Caiaphas. He came to Christ. Now, Caiaphas had authority, but he didn't know what he was working with. Christ, doing what he did, Centurion comes up to him and says, I understand authority. Here's another instance, right? Christ in Legion. Christ comes up to Legion. He comes up to the man that's possessed with the demonic forces and things, and he said, what's your name? We are legion. You ain't just dealing with one. You dealing with a battalion of demonic forces. We are legion. Looking at you, I understand the authority that you call it. I understand that even in your authority, it ain't time yet. Don't cast us out. It ain't time yet. I know you got the authority to do it, but it ain't time yet. Even you got to operate by the word. Even you, this ain't time yet. But they recognized authority. That's why they had to leave the place that they were in. Jump into the pigs and then go off the cliff. But authority, because for a time, Legion was the authority figure over that man's body. Until a higher authority stepped in. I said a higher authority, somebody with a higher caliber, somebody with a greater caliber. Man, I got, I'm, I'm getting all the way through this. Y'all hear me? I want you to, instead of desiring celebrity, to desire eternity. Too many of us now are desiring celebrity. We want people to notice who we are right now. You can't see my gift. People don't left churches because their pastor couldn't see their gift. You ain't never in church, but your pastor can't see your gift. Did you come to minister or did you come to showcase? I don't know what you came to do. I came to show out. Because I have the voice. Because I have the pacing that makes the crowd go crazy. And I was really thinking that they praise, praising me. They ain't come to see you. Well, some of them didn't anyway. Because some of them did. <laughs> Came to see you and that's why people leave after their cousin get off stage. Because that's all. it's not a pulpit anymore for them. It's a stage. So when cousin get off stage and he's finished showcasing, now we finish too. And then we wonder why we church heard and we can't stay in the church and 
and everything's going wrong with us, you ain't never invested in it. Never mind. But your celebrity may only last for 15 seconds. Is 15 seconds worth an eternity? And some people out there, no talent whatsoever. And every time, every chance they get, they're trying to keep extending their 15 seconds. Your time been up. They keep trying to extend their 15 seconds. So what do they do to extend their 15 seconds? They show you a little more. Mm-mm. No, nah, see, y'all don't want to deal with me. They show you just a little bit more because at first this was enough for you to be interested. But because I don't really have anything on the inside of me, I have to keep showing you what's on the outside. So I have to keep dressing me up to make me look better. Why do you think the world got to change their style all the time to keep you in their mind? Cry, the Lord, God is the same today, tomorrow, in the past, forever. He the same. But we got to keep switching. We got to keep switching. They've been reading this same word for a thousand years, and we still trying to make up something different. Anyway. I didn't say don't exegete, exegete the text and get something out of that for this generation. I didn't say that. I was saying we try to make stuff out of it that it is. That's why we got this doctrine of inclusion and we got this no judgment junk or whatever have you. Yeah, I'm going to judge you. I sure am. Because I need to decide whether we're going to be friends, whether we're going to be associates, or whether I don't associate whatsoever with you. I got to make that judgment because I'm not hopping in something that's going to provoke my lust. Anyway, back to the text. <laughs> But now I want to bring you to, man, I spent so much time on this, but I really, I really want to bring you to this thing of this thought, this imagery, if you would, of a world-class combine. Y'all ever heard of a combine? They have a combine when they do an NFL thing, a draft, if you will. They have a combine when they do the NBA draft. And what they do is, uh, Brother Mother, can I use you real quick? Could you come here real quick? Hey, man, you stand right there, please, sir. Please, sir. And this is what they do. Turn around. This is what they do at the combine. Put your arms out like this right here. They measure your wingspan. I said this is self-assessment, but pay attention closely. They measure your wingspan. He's got a good wingspan. I can use him. <laughs> He's got a good wingspan. All right, you can put your arms down. Now, because I'm sure then you don't have to get up here. Now, now l- l- let's just see how high you can jump. Just jump. Just jump. Just jump. Okay, he got a good vertical. He got a good vertical leap. Somebody say, these are measurables. I'm going somewhere. Say, these are measurables. So now I'm looking at, okay, okay, he, he look, he's ambidextrous, okay. He can use his left and his right hand. All right, all right. Like, run, run, around the, run around the church real quick. Run around the church real quick. Okay, watch out now. Watch out now. He's burning. He's burning. He's burning. All right. He got a good 40 time. He got a good 40 time. He got a good stride. He got a good stride. He got a good 40 time. He got a real good stride. He got a nice wingspan. He looks like he could be the face of my franchise. Y'all ain't listening to me yet. I said he looks like he could be the face of my franchise because I can measure what I see. You can take your seat. I can measure what I see. So I just told y'all, I just looked at Paul and I saw Paul's wingspan. And I, and I saw Paul's height. And I saw his ability to run. And I saw his ability to jump. And I made my judgment based on that which what I saw. But what if, per chance, you wasn't really dealing with Paul? What if, per chance, you were really dealing with Saul? Not Saul, the old Paul. I'm talking about Saul, the one that you want to be king. Y'all don't want to mess with me today. I'm talking about Saul, the one that you wanted to be king. Because Saul was head and shoulders above everybody. I said Samuel favored Saul based on what the seer of the Lord still based what he thought about Saul on what he saw on his exterior. 
So sometimes we'll see things on the exterior in church and judge you by your exterior because you praise better than everybody else. Because that's what I can see. Because you pray better than everybody else. That's what I can see. Because you shout better than everybody else. That's what I can see. Say those are the measurables. But the thing that makes anybody that's entered into a contest, into a game, better than the next person has nothing to do with anything that you can measure. Matter of fact, they do have a name for it. They call it intangibles. I'm trying to speak to a church that has some intangibles. Ah, a church that has some intangibles. Some intangibles. Something that you can't see. Now, measurables, just to get back there, right? Measurables are a standard of comparison. A caliber, an assessment. This is how the world operates, but that ain't how my God operates. My God bases things on the intangibles. And he looks at the non-statistical. Say, I'm not a number. This is how God operates. Samuel's impressed with Saul's stature. But David had heart. But David had heart. The Bible tells us that David is a man after God's, he's a man after God's own heart. David had heart. I didn't say David was perfect. I said David had heart. You can't measure heart. You can't measure heart. Aren't you so glad that God doesn't look on the outside? Because from the outside, I'm a dark-skinned runt. You understand me? But in the spirit, I'm a giant. Not because I'm anything special, but because I got the heart to fight. One of the biggest things I caught myself, and I told y'all I'm fascinated by history, I caught myself watching something on last night to do with history of the World War, and one of Hitler's biggest mistakes was that he misjudged America's fight. He said, they don't have the stomach for a fight. But see, what America had done at that time is they had counted the cost. Because at that time, that's when we used to make stuff. Yeah, I'm talking about you, country. That's when we used to make stuff instead of relying on others to make stuff for us. I'm talking about what I'm talking about. We didn't rely on nobody else to build nothing for us. Matter of fact, we were the ones setting the example. We were the ones setting the mark. We were the ones that everybody else was trying to catch up with. And now we're trying to catch up with them. You see your salutatorians and your valedictorians and their names are not American. I ain't mad at you excelling in the country. I'm just saying what happened to the people that's here. Oh, because you've been here and you haven't had to invest. And now you're just sitting back on what you think is owed to you. This is what happened. He said that they ain't got a heart for the fight because he had done some silly things like trying to go to Russia in the middle of the winter and fight them people. And his, he was already thinning out his forces. But then when Japan did what they did, and they provoked us, they got us to a fight, they woke up the sleeping giant as it's called. Then he decides by himself, no counsel, decides by himself, well, let's fight America too. They ain't got the stomach for a fight. He looked at something and misjudged it. So don't you look at somebody because they ain't the rowdy one. The one that can whoop your tail is the one that won't say nothing to you. The one that'll put you in a box is the one that's just sitting up there like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I done turned my cheek both times. Now next time it's on you. <laughs> he said turn the other cheek. I turned the other one. I ain't got no more to turn now. <laughs> Amen. But he ain't the one that's got to talk. He the one that just delivers. Amen. David didn't, David didn't make those songs up by himself. David didn't sing, David killed his tens of thousands. People sung that about him. Amen? But Samuel's impressed with his stature. The world is impressed with what they see on the outside. God don't care nothing about what's on your outside. What is on your inside? How does your heart work? Because if you got the heart for this, then you can win. Talent 
and potential. Without heart is disappointment in process. I said talent and potential without heart is disappointment in process. This is why your heart is broke every time you see somebody not reach their potential. Because what you was really watching was disappointment in process. Because they didn't have the heart to go through. It's been a many talented people that just didn't have the heart. There's a couple basketball, a couple football players. There's a young man right now, and I hope that we're praying for him that's going through some things. They say that uh, as, as far as a parallel, they say that this guy's got Randy Moss kind of like talent. But because he's addicted, I told you I wanted to deal with that addiction, didn't I? But because he's addicted, he has a problem. Because he has a problem. Mm, I don't know if I'm going to get to it. Because he has a problem, nobody wants to call him on it. Nobody wants to call him on it. Everybody say, well, we need to help him out. The way that you help somebody out is to get them out from underneath it. Amen? You want to help somebody out? Get them from underneath it. Amen? Because addiction doesn't only deal with narcotics. I told you it's elitism and lust as well, right? Sometimes quitting the suppliers and quitting the enablers are more difficult than quitting the substance. I said quitting the suppliers and quitting the enablers is sometimes more difficult than getting rid of the substance. Because after some time, you might realize that the substance isn't good for you. But if you have people that you thought was in your circle that keep supplying it. I don't want a circle that supplies me with excuses. Because I might become addicted to excuses. Addiction will take you out of your mind. I'm talking about looking into yourself, people. Addiction will knock you way off base. It will kill practicality. The reason why somebody will sell you a car for a fix is because what that fix will do to them. You lose value of things when you're an addict. You think I'm talking about somebody with a narcotic problem. I'm talking to them too, but I'm talking to those of us who have now linked ourselves with people and suppliers and enablers. They supply you with excuses. That's why you haven't accomplished any of your goals because they keep supplying you with excuses. I'm not gonna, we might not be friends after this message because I'm not supplying you with an excuse anymore. Amen? I am not an apologist for Addicts. I'm an advocate for recovery. I'm not going to pacify you. I'm not going to give you money knowing what you're going to do with it. I'm not going to give you position knowing what you're going to do with it. I'm not going to give you association knowing what you're going to do with it. I might have to disconnect you from a season, for a season. I might, I might have to look. I can't help you. Because right now, I'm doing you more harm than good. When you ready, I'll be here for you, but only when you ready. Because at some point in time that we got to realize this scripture in its full intent, some water, some plant, stop trying to increase folk. When you've done planting a field, you move on to another. <laughs> you move on to another field. Most scenarios, you don't water till after you plant it. So even if you do both, it's still a separate process. I said planting and watering are separate processes. I said planting and watering are separate processes. You trying to do everything at the same time and increase them and think that you're doing them a favor. You are not God. 
man, oh, I got to deal with this thing. You understand me? Stop enabling folks to fail. The reasons why they have failed is because you keep supporting them in their failures. Let the bottom fall all the way out. Because if they hit rock bottom, I said if they hit rock bottom, I said if they hit rock bottom, if they hit rock bottom, we're supposed to lead them to a rock that is higher than... I said, the Lord is my rock and my refuge. So if you let him hit rock bottom. If you let him hit rock bottom. I know you love your baby. I love him. I love my baby. I love him. I love him. You are why they still addicted. Deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. Well, I don't understand why they keep failing. Because you keep supporting them. You can't do it anyway. Well, 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 I just came back away from, okay, well, just watch it fail then. Become a pro process of their disappointment. At some point, I'm not saying to leave people high and dry. Off jump. But after a while, something got to click in. I'm not helping you. Because everything that I've tried to do, you still stuck here. So you know what I got to do now? I got to withdraw. And I have to let God handle that. And no matter how much you don't like me right now, and no matter how much you can't stand me right now, if you should come back around, because God is going to be the one to pull you out anyway. Because guess what? I might have only been able to plant. And I have to be okay with that. But once I planted, and I found out that planting, and check this out, you've done all you can do, thank you, Holy Ghost, you've done all you can do after you planted and you watered. If you had planted and you watered, you've got to walk away. After you have planted, after you watered, you have got to walk away because you do not have the authority to increase. I want to move quickly. I'm going to get out your way. I want to move quickly here because we're talking about not supplying people with things, right? So that we understand part of warfare is supply. Part of warfare is supply. Amen? Part of warfare is supply. But within warfare, within warfare, one of the best tactics, if you will, one of the best tactics in warfare is an element. One of the best tactics in warfare is the element. It's the element of surprise. Because Hitler was surprised when they had that much fight in them. He was surprised. He didn't think that that was coming. He was like, what? What happened? So the best element is the element of surprise. How are you going to surprise somebody? You can't surprise them with your measurables. Are you hearing me, church? You cannot surprise the enemy with your measurables. The enemy know how much you can praise. The enemy know how much you can praise. He's been measuring you the whole time. Because just as your coach measures you, so does your opponent. So as your mentor measures you, so does your antagonist. And they measure you too. Because just as we're trying to get everything out of you to win, they're trying to get everything from you so that they can win. The only one that ain't going to be surprised about us or our purpose is God. Because he's all-knowing and all-seeing. So the only person you ain't going to surprise is God. You ain't gonna surprise God. Judas didn't even surprise God. See, I knew it was gonna be this one. He didn't surprise me because he understands our purpose. You understand what I'm saying? But we will surprise some folk with our heart. You surprise some folk with your nastiness too now. But you'll surprise people with your heart because Judas 
You the, you, the, you the silent type. But you the type that's going every night. You ain't even fighting your own battles. You going into warfare for somebody else. Yeah, yeah, I know I said, I know I said that warfare is when we lust after something. I said L war is when we lust after something. We want something that we don't have. And that is a true definition. That is not the entire definition. The entire definition is also when something is lusting after you. And you have to defend yourself. Or you have to defend others because you're aligned with them. You're an ally to them. Amen? So all the measurables in the world ain't going to get you to victory. Amen. Only the heart will. Only the heart will. You're not going to surprise God. Because he knows your purpose. <sighs> Y'all want the rest? Oh, y'all want me to run home? You have said. You have said. I just want to deal with two things here. Having no confidence in the flesh and a higher caliber. No confidence in the flesh. Remember I said that you don't have to do Introductions, authority, understands authority. Let me connect that from you. The collection of accolade does not equate a victorious life. The collection of accolade does not equate a victorious life. Stop making personal checklists. Stop making religious checklists. Stop making notoriety checklists. Stop counting it against you. Let it go. Part of counting the cost is letting it go. Because we've been counting it against us. He doesn't. Why are you? He doesn't. Why are you? I know what happened in your past was such a bad and tremendous and horrible thing. I know. I get it. Stop counting it against yourself. I'm not taking it lightly. People don't understand this for being, uh, uh, you know, uh, not having a heart. Being insensitive is. Okay? That's not what I'm equated to. What I'm saying is this. Stop counting it against you. If God says that he can forgive, if he says that he can blot out, you're talking about the creator of all. If he says that he can blot out your iniquity, if he says that he can forget your sin, why you can't? A higher caliber. A higher caliber. Ah, a higher caliber is this. Caliber is capacity and quality. Higher caliber is going to cost. I'm going to leave you with this and we'll pick this up next week. Higher caliber is going to cost. Don't you compromise your caliber. Don't you compromise your caliber. I'm going to get into what your caliber entails next week. But you got to have the heart for this. If you don't have a heart for God, we can help you get one. But if you don't have the heart for God, all the accolades that you can mount up, all the wonderful things that you have done, will be for naught. It will be like watching disappointment in its process. Your collection of accolades do not equate victorious living. What people can measure about you. We saw Brother Mundo run around the church and we can measure that. We can look at his countenance and say, you can put this face on something and say, here, you know what I'm saying? When you look at his face, he's got a strong face. Ain't nothing that he's doing, he's got a strong face. Whatever face that you got, you may have a beautiful face. You may have a lovely face. You may have a face, my grandmother has a face of experience. Why? You see it on her face. Amen. But that don't have nothing to do with your heart. I don't have nothing to do with your heart. I want to close on this point. Don't compromise your caliber. 
Because the only way that you can get a higher caliber is you got to press. You got to have perseverance. You got to press towards the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. You got to study to show you that self approval, workman unto God, need to not be ashamed, rightly divide the word of God. You got to do something. Amen. You got to receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Amen. Thanks be unto God, who always causes us to triumph. If you have a higher caliber, it's because he gave it to you. Don't you compromise what he gave you. That's in the contract. Stand to your feet all over this place. Thank you.